going on guys this is a quick diy on how to replace rotors pads and even calipers for your chevy traverse gmc acadia buick enclave and saturn outlook it all applies to the same thing so let's hop right into it first thing you want to do is locate your your uh, bolts that are holding your caliper bracket in place these are 21 millimeters up here and also whoop, down there as well whoop, right there if you don't have any power tools available at home, you could just use a breaker bar for this or even a socket wrench. Uh, so basically you want to find a 21 millimeter, but I'm going to prefer this method and this will take them off pretty easily. So let's take these off. Before we continue actually doing that, let's remove our brake hose uh, for our brake line feeding the caliper. Uh, to remove this, you just remove this bolt. I believe this is a 11 millimeter and we're going to remove this. Uh, so a lot of people, professionals, will take some tweezers with some rubber protection and squeeze this. Um, this is kind of a more of a backyard fix, so I'm just going to kind of leave it hanging here um, and put it back on the new caliper and then bleed the new caliper and we should be good to go. But if you want to be safe, better safe than sorry, grab some pliers and just kind of squeeze this hose. Be very careful not to cut it. A lot of, like I said, a lot of technicians like to... Uh, wrap their pliers with like rubber so that it protects it from cutting it on accident so if you want to do that be my guess but in this case i'm just gonna like remove it let it hang and then i'm gonna remove the whole caliper assembly together so like i said use an 11 millimeter bolt or 11 millimeter socket sorry and have this removed you'll drip a little bit of brake fluid so obviously i'm using power tools so it wouldn't apply to you but makes it pretty easy to get these bolts out. And then we'll do this one as well. Look at that. Since it's old and we're getting rid of that, we don't really care much for it. So we'll be replacing it. I'd say the caliper came off way too easy, spilled a little bit of brake fluid too. Um, that's probably somewhat of the source of our problems, but we're replacing everything just to make sure that we can get rid of those problems altogether. Now to remove the rotors, there's a little bolt right here. This is a Torx uh, size T30 is what you want to use for this. T30. Move in this bolt. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but you get the gist. Remove this bolt altogether your rotor should come off. Now, it won't come off as easily as this because this has been a problem that I've been troubleshooting for quite some time. Um, and I'm hoping that this is the last uh, piece that I'll ever have to do. So what we're gonna do here is just remove this stupid bolt. All right, now that's out, we can actually just remove the rotor from the hub. Now, it won't be this easy if you're replacing it on your own and it hasn't been changed for a while. What's actually going to happen is you might actually have to hit this a few times with a mallet. Uh, you know, make sure that when you're changing things too, put a tiny bit of anti-seize right around here. So that way it'll never give you that issue ever again. Now with everything off, we're going to go get our new rotor and caliper. Putting the new rotor on, make sure you have it lined up with your hub where the hold down screw is. So that way, you know, no mistakes are made. It's a quick thing, but... You know, you can always just take it off and line it back up again, but just make sure you line that up so that way you can put the screw back on. So I have that on now. It's nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. So let's move on to installing the caliper. One thing you are going to notice with your new calipers is that the weight is a little surprising. Um, it shouldn't surprise you that much because you're old calipers, but when you start trying to install this thing, you'll notice that you don't have a whole lot of leverage. So I'm not going to be holding the phone for this one. What I'm going to do is I'll start out with the top bolt um, into the bracket. And then once that's done, then I can kind of wiggle this around to get the bottom bolt on as well. So that's what I would recommend doing. Um, yeah. What I like to do before I start putting bolts in that have a lot of vibration to them, I'm going to take the original bolts that I took out. I'm going to use some thread locker blue. <clears throat> And I'm only going to use like a dime size at right around, oh Jesus, 
So, just for example, I know you guys, I need a better system than this. But, that's about all you need. Okay? I've had bolts back out on me before while driving. And that's the only reason why I do that. So that it doesn't happen again. And yes, those bolts were torqued down to spec. And still backed out. So, just to be on the safe side. Better be safe than sorry. The top bolt kind of in for the most part. I just kind of hand tighten it on there. I have enough room to just kind of wiggle this around so that I can line it up perfectly with the bottom bolt as well. So just a recommendation if you need leverage start with the top bolt. So everything's on nice and snug. Now you might notice that your new calipers don't have the hardware installed. Make sure you get the hardware included. It'll come in a separate pack. Should look a little bit something like this. So let's go ahead and install that now. Okay, I'm an idiot. Um, I actually meant to start out on the bottom on the other side, on the passenger side. This is the driver's side, so that's just an example of what can happen. So in order to get yourself some leverage again, I'm actually gonna put the bolt back on and start at the top, then at, end at the bottom. We all make mistakes. Caliper pin bolts are out. I just have it sitting here right now because I want to. what I wanna show you is that the brake hose is yet to be connected. So it's going to be much, much easier for me to take the whole caliper off and then start putting on the pads. And then when I put everything on and back together again, then connect the brake hose and get ready to bleed. One little trick I need to show you before you install the hardware, just put a little, a little dollop, like maybe about that much, you can see it, of the little anti-seize on the bump here. Careful not to hit the rotor with it, but just to have it on the mounting points of where the hardware is going to be. So just a little bit, just a little brush on each little area. That'll do you good in the future. Okay, and once the hardware's installed, make sure you take like something like a small flathead screwdriver and just kind of make sure all your gaps are good on the front and back side. Make sure you can get all the way back there between the rotor and the hardware. So the last thing you need is to put this all together and then all of a sudden the hardware is set up too much one way versus the other way and then you get a bunch of screeching. And then, yeah, don't need that. <laughs> okay, so here's uh, the pad with the wear indicator on it. If you don't know what this is, once your pad gets down to a certain level, this metal piece right here will start scraping against your rotor, creating a squeaking noise. Once that happens, it's basically an indicator to change your brake pads. Now, most technicians will actually tell you that the one, the one pad with the wear indicator goes on the inside portion of the bracket. Now, uh, to me, I don't feel like it really matters, but this has always been something talked about. But for me, I just go ahead and follow the professional's advice. I stick this on the inside portion instead. Um, but I've seen it plenty of times <laughs> where I've installed it the other way around, nothing bad happens. So <laughs> just, uh, just an FYI. But for right here, for this video, we're gonna be installing this on the inside part. Oh, another thing that's not quite talked about as much is putting lubrication on contact points. So this is where your um, caliper pistons will be touching the caliper which vib vibration friction can happen here. And then obviously the contact points on the hardware itself. So just to have a little bit of lubrication there, so that way you can rest assured that it is going to be a quiet ride. All right, and once you've struggled immensely to line these up to get them <laughs> fit into the brackets, uh, then it's time to put the actual caliper system together. Now, once your caliper unit is all put together, before you put your caliper uh, pin bolts um, in, what you wanna do is, also I like to put blue thread locker on those too. You don't really have to, it's just, you know what, better be safe than sorry. Once you have those in with your, thle oh, blah, with your th thread locker, what you wanna do is just tighten those up until you have a good tightness to it for hand tightening. And then we're gonna get there. <laughs> it's kinda hard to do this one handed, but. All right, so I think this is the last one. Okay, that's about hand tight. What I like to do is just do a little uh, 
just to make sure it's on there real good. Same thing with this one. There we go. Check this one again, just to be sure. Oh, that had a little extra in it. And we're good. And then what I want to do is take this protective cap off the brake fluid feed to the caliper. It's usually like, a, there we go, it's starting to come out. Oh my gosh. Jeez. All right, it's out. And then I want to take my brake hose, line that sucker up. You're going to take your 11 millimeter and tighten that sucker right back down. There we go, nice and tight. You don't really need it crazy tight, just a, a nice good snug hand tight, um, or as tight enough as it can go by hand. And then basically this is ready. Oh my God, my hands are so greasy right now. Okay, here's your bleeder screw. Get yourself one of these or a water bottle and a curly straw or something. You can use some rubber hose uh, or some nylon hose or whatever. So basically what you wanna do is once you're bleeding the system, you have it drip into something where all the brake fluid goes. I know, I've been sounding like I'm out of breath. I need to get out, get some exercise. Woo! But that is how you change a caliper on one of these cars. Um, and the rotors and the pads. All one piece. Um, if you like what you saw and the advice helps you, I'm only here to try to help myself. But also, like, if it helps me, but also helps other people, I'd rather just post that and make sure that, you know, if it does help someone else, then I'm here for it, right? <laughs> but in all seriousness, if this helped you, I know it's cheesy to say, like, subscribe, follow, whatever. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and here. So make sure you support your creators. The algorithm works its way through likes and comments. Unfortunate. That's just how it is. Just uh, make sure you do me a solid. If it helped you, then fine. If it didn't help you, leave a hate comment and still drive up the algorithm. I don't care. I'll see you guys on the next one coming soon in spring. We're going to do a stage three Texas speed cam swap and a tune for Terra tuning on the Dodge Charger. So stay tuned.